自分一人一人が幸せになることが目的だっていうね自分が幸せになることが目的だっていうの人生のそれどうも俺納得できないんですよ He's an absolute legend in animation and movie industry. He made so much history through his animation. And not only inside of Japan, but he has been inspiring so many people all over the world. His animation literally moves people and m a k e people question about life and the way of living. As a Japanese, I remember when I was growing up watching so many times of Totoro, Princess Mononoke, and then Spirited Away. Countless of times. And quite recently, he released a new movie called The Boy and the Heron. Actually, the original Japanese title is quite different, and if I translate it directly, and it will be How Would You Live? It feels like he's literally asking us that question. And I watched the movie, and it was just. Welcome to my channel, my name is Sho. In this channel, we share love and positivity with a twist of Japanese philosophy in it. So if you like that, make sure to subscribe button, notification bell. It helps me to reach more people. So that I can help more people. So, in this video, I'm gonna share who is Hayao Miyazaki and how this man can inspire so many people all over the world. January 5th, 1941. He was born in a quite wealthy family as a second born child out of four boys. His father owned an aircraft factory, so they were quite wealthy because of the World War II. He, as a child, wasn't really a strong kid, he was more Very weak, not really good at sports. So he was not this typical popular kid in school. Even though at quite a young age, he was against the war and he didn't like the fact that a lot of people were killing a lot of people. So as a young child, he had to deal with his own paradox, this strong feeling within himself that I don't like war and I'm against war. But the fact that he and his father or his family was very, very wealthy and there's a foot on the table and there's a roof on the, on the top of the head because of the war. Because of that, he was struggling with this strong paradoxical feeling within himself. And at age seven, he had to deal with this huge obstacle in life, which his mother got very, very sick. And it continued for nine years. So, because of that, he couldn't have a normal relationship with his own mother. And obviously, he couldn't receive these hugs and attention and unconditional love from a mother. And this experience definitely made him stronger and shaped his personality. And one of the strongest messages that Hayao Miyazaki t e n d to paint or portray in his movie is Musical no Mujun no Nakade, s o r e d e m u i k i t e k We must live within our own paradox. This means that we both light and shadow. And the stronger the light, bigger the shadow. And it is not easy, especially when you are trying to be good and trying to do good for yourself and for your people. Or for the world. It is not easy to accept your own shadow. It is not easy to look within and face yourself that the fact that you have a lot of shadow, even though you are intentionally trying to become the light. And I believe a lot of people resonate with this because everyone wants to be good, everyone wants to inspire people, everyone wants to be kind. But at the same time, we struggle with our own shadow. But we must keep living. And this is a core message of what he portrayed through his movies. If you look at Princess Mononoke, this protagonist, the main character, is called Ashtaka. This young man got cursed and got kicked out from the village. Inside a movie, that they don't really talk about that, but and he was actually the young prince. But even though after he got cursed, and then it was inevitable that the fact that he's going to die and he got kicked out of the village, he never complains. He accepts his fate, he accepts his shadow, and then still keeps living. 1963, when he was 22 years old, he got hired by Toe Doga and he begins his career as an animator. And next year at the meeting, he's going to meet one of the most important p e r s o n in his life, who is Isao Takahata, who will make a significant animation movie called Hotaru no Haka, and also who is going to be a partner of the studio Ghibli. Actually, so many people think it's Ghibli. Because it starts with the G, not with the J. So a lot of people actually call it Studio Ghibli. But let me explain. This is actually Studio Ghibli, as sounds like a J, Ghibli. It is also a name of Italian military aircraft. And since you know, he was a huge fan of military aircraft and his father owned the company, and etc., so that's why he picked up the name. The spelling of Ghibli is G H I B L I. And this is actually an Italian word. It means hot air blowing in the Sahara Desert. And you can actually pronounce it as Ghibli. 
However, he mispronounced it as Ghibli, and that's why it's called Studio Ghibli. He took part in so many different animation before he got famous. The very first Hayao World was published as Kaze no Tani no Naoshika. This is the very first movie that everyone knows that this is Hayao Miyazaki, this is one of the Ghibli movie. However, Studio Ghibli built after this movie, so this is not a movie by the Studio Ghibli, or even though it's by Hayao Miyazaki, but it was a different production company. <laughs> Now, one year before when he released Naoshka, 1983, when he was 42, his own mother passed away. He really loved his mother and respected his mother, and he actually got inspired so much by his own mother's character. That is why if you watch the uh, Jivari movie, there's so many strong independent women. You cannot ignore these women in each movie. And Adora from The Raptor, and she was actually modeled by his own mother. This very strong and loving, powerful woman. It must be so hard going through that grief and pain and knowing the fact that she's no longer with him anymore. But he kept going and he made that stunning movie. In 1985, he finally built Studio Ghibli because Naoshka did so well that movie generated around 7 million US dollars. But he wasn't really interested in money, so he invested a lot of money onto his partner's movie, Isao Takahata. He's supposed to make an animation movie with uh, the investment that he received from Hayao Miyazaki, but he actually decided to make this documentary movie about the water and this local village. But Isao Takahata and also Hayao Miyazaki, they have huge appreciation and understanding about water. And Hayao Miyazaki is actually called a uh, writer of the water. The secret story, which nobody knows about the spirited away, is the story of the water. However, Isao Takahata, he didn't finish the movie and they spent all, all of the investment, all of the money that Hayao Miyazaki invested, so they went broke. And one of the most important person in Studio Ghibli, Toshio Suzuki, he actually suggested Hayao Miyazaki to make another animation. And then he came up with Kemushi no Boro. But Toshio Suzuki was like, no, we need to make something different. And then Rapita was born when he was 45 years old. And actually knowing the fact that he made this stunning movie and in Ghibli wasn't as famous as now because he hasn't even made Princess Mononoke and Spirited Away at this point and he is already 45 years old. Because he wasn't looking for success and money and fame and etc. He wanted to create animation. And he's still creating animation still this day. But one of the reasons why the Ghibli or Hayao Miyazaki or his work is so stunning and captivating and moves people and touches people's heart is because of his discipline. And I'm not gonna lie, I felt ashamed Honestly, looking at this man, the dedication that he has, the passion, he just continued to fight for himself and for the world and for the audience that are looking forward to watch his movie. He never compromised even, even the little details. And not only through animation, but knowing the fact that how much he's dedicated his life to create the animation and never compromising even the little, little details teaches us what matters the most in life. He sees purpose in a different level. He believes that a purpose is bigger than temporary emotions, you know, which come and go. He sees his own purpose as a journey between light and shadow. That's why. This is a message from him and from his movie. Or maybe it's actually beyond of his presence. Maybe he's the one who's delivering the message, but it's coming from somewhere bigger than us. And he understand this is his mission, this is his purpose. So that's why, 82 years old, he's still making the movie. 
as we have the light and shadow both at the same time within us, the whole world, the whole universe is also light and shadow. It's not about right or wrong. There is no such a thing in this world. Right or wrong is a man-made. God made light and shadow so that we can understand this balance and harmony and an absolute unity and also living in this polarity. But it's beyond right or wrong. It's about the willingness. How do I want to live? He understands this everything comes down to you. The self, the individuality. You are the one who can help yourself. You are the one who can change your life. You are the one who can ruin your life. You are the one who can help other people. But this is the individuality. This is the essence of the selfishness. It's not a bad thing at all. It's not a self-centered desire that doesn't care about anybody else. It's about the actual meaning of the self. You have to help yourself fast. Without understanding your internal state or what you're thinking and how you're feeling and being able to reflect, you cannot achieve nothing outside of yourself. It's an absolute unity. But without being able to unite within yourself, you won't experience unity with the world. So the question is, how would you live?